Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to show you a mirror match between two Quetzali. This is an amazing game we have lined up. It goes deep into the late game and we see everything. From cloaks and bombers to markets and knights. Let's get into it. My name is Ferrixter. Joined today by my co-caster, I Know Funny. We're both pros and we're here to break down this Polyseum game between Jacek Poland and Arthur. Polyseum is the official monthly tournament format run by the creators of the game. If you want to participate, links to everything are down below. All right, so spawning here in the west side, this is Jacek Poland, and spawning in the east, this is Arthur. So right off the bat, Jacek has pretty good resource rates. He's got five fruit in his capital. That's going to allow him to get his first two upgrades with just a single tech. That's going to be a nice economic advantage for him. And if we turn our attention over to Arthur, not quite as good. Four fruits, not enough for that level three city that Jacek's going to have. And if we turn our attention to that village on the shoreline, it's not enough to even upgrade that city over there. But let's see what the players do of this. Starting off, both of them going with a warrior first. Jason, of and course, gonna going with fruit. Yeah, so he can get those first two upgrades. Arthur, I was well going for organization, although again, not quite as good for him. He takes and then an explorer place. instead of a workshop. See what this explorer finds. It back and forth an awful lot in the middle of the map, uh, kind of avoiding going too deep into Jacek's territory. That's kind of rough for Arthur, but he definitely has all the vision that he needs, at least in the short term. Jacek also going for an explorer first. Getting much better information, seeing all of Arthur's cities, including his capital. Really important here, because he was able to move uh, one turn earlier as host, his defender's actually going to reach that village in the far south before Arthur's does. Yeah, Arthur's going to see that, so he's not even going to go for that village. just going to go send his defender over to the ruin. Got this tight, compact of city set up, but Jacek's going to try to attack with everything through this little bottleneck there. A veteran swordsman's great for defending, so Jacek picks up archery, gives all of his units these forest defense bonuses, as well as these nice archers, which we're going to see in a few turns, probably. Gonna see that a lot sooner. Arthur already has his first archer up. Jacek following suit, making two of his own, capturing his fourth city in the back and getting a workshop. And Arthur is population capped on this city up here, so he's going to have to prime it, get ready to unsiege on the next turn, which is delaying his attack over there down southwest. Yeah, I don't know how much I even love the decision of Jacek to siege the city with this defender. Um, he could have taken out this warrior, which had one HP when he moved this on. So that might have been a slightly better use because, you know, killing one warrior is like two stars of inconvenience for Arthur, whereas denying income from this base was only one. But mm -hmm. it's an interesting choice. Maybe he felt like it wasn't worth killing it because keeping that warrior alive might have been uh, preventing him from being able to make another unit due to that population cap that you mentioned. Arthur is finally able to advance with some of his units here, pushing his swordsmen down into that village in the southwest, getting ready to siege. Oh yeah, Arthur's implying a lot of pressure here. Um, all Jacy can really do from this base even is just spam out defenders over and over. He there we go, that's a really nice warrior. seat. But yeah, I don't see any way for Jacek to break that. Arthur using forestry to finally get that one city to level two. <laughs> oh, and, and diplomacy. diplomacy. That's an interesting choice. Yeah. The archers are already applying a ton of pressure right now, but he's trying to increase, you know, add some gas to the fire with cloaks to f support later on. Yeah, Arthur's got a nice concave over here. He doesn't have a lot of units right now, and there are a lot of archers for Jacek. So if Jacek is able to push his way forward and actually get that cloak to land, especially on some of these larger bases, 
that with the forest defense bonus is going to make a lot of daggers that are going to be really, really difficult to kill. So Arthur is really going to have to make a really, really tight defense here. Yeah, especially as Jacek adds even more going climbing so that he can push his archers in even deeper to Arthur's territory. We're seeing a lot of defenders from Arthur. He's just trying to survive this position right now. Jacek now, he's going to go ahead, his killer monument down. Both players are getting ready for giants, looks like. But yeah. it looks like Jacek's the one who actually has the resources to pull one off. Jacek could have taken a giant this oh, last never mind, with that lighthouse. Yeah, you know, with that lighthouse, Arthur's actually going to be able to do it first. Yeah, first giant out on the field, drops the monument for that level 3 to get those additional resources. J6 discovering another village up in the north. So it looks like he might be able to get more established in that area first, and he goes for fishing to take to the water. Now, those cloaks were trained a long time ago, but it's taken them a while to get across the map, and by the time it looks like they're about to be hitting, they're going to be attacking these higher level cities where Arthur has been producing giants from. So a yeah. lot of foresight was required in that call, but it looks like it'll be paying off. I'm impressed so far with how well Arthur is holding here, but I mean, he has this nice concave around here, whereas J6 units are all trying to push through this narrow choke. So he's making really good use of his defensive terrain. Just the way the map generated is kind of giving him a hand here and making this hold. I'm going to see a nice lighthouse to give him his first giant. He's setting up a space for that cloak to go through into Arthur's capital. The dagger infiltration he got last turn, maybe not the best with um, only on a level 2 city, only two daggers. Yeah, Arthur sees that there's another cloak here. The only tile that it can be based on the other units that he has, he knows the cloak is here, so he has to find a way to be able to reach it. He chops a tree to build a road so he can actually get his warrior to move there to reveal, kills the cloak, and then uses that same warrior to uh, take out another archer. He's getting really good Very nice use of his roads. units, yeah. Another cloak made up in the north, too. J6 planning to try to take this last base up here. Arthur gets yeah, an explorer, dense. so he's going to see it ahead of time. Also gets a lighthouse. The explorers have been pretty good about actually getting the lighthouses in this game. J6 picking up two on one explorer was nuts. Absolutely. Well, how densely actions. packed all of Arthur's units are, these cloaks are seeming... It's really hard for them to make any way here, except on the water. Yeah, I want to turn our attention to this north area really quick. Jacek, like, Arthur saw that Jacek's cloak was here and then sees it vanish. So he knows it can only move two. It would have had to be in one of these tiles if it was moving closer to this base. So with there only being two possible tiles for the cloak to be on since this one's occupied by the warrior, Arthur's going to find a way to unsiege that. He moves these units here to check to find out if it's here. Moves in there and sees this eye icon, so he knows it has to be here. He's going to move his rider there, which is going to reveal and then pull back. So really good job mind-sweeping that cloak. And Arthur's just going to keep building up units up there to try to uh, hold on to his control of the north, solidify it if he's able to. Jacek makes an interesting move here, which is moving the cloak straight through the warrior to the other side. Arthur's going to be able to see that eye icon on two of his units, but that's only going to narrow it down to three spaces. So he's still going to have to minesweep to find that one. Resources from a ruin, pretty nice. He's able to find that cloak right away, reveal it and kill it off. And he continues to macro up this, this top base. He's now got like four units up here to J6-2. So Arthur is getting, uh, he's kind of made himself a bit safer up in the north than he was. Absolutely, he's still fighting for his life. It's a struggle, but he's kind of almost thriving even with the way he's able to deal with these cloaks, get so many of his own giants and ping down these archers. j attack doesn't stop though, because now he's using those ports he made earlier to continue into the water which is another place that Arthur is weak from. 
Yeah, Arthur still doesn't even have fishing. He has no presence on the water. Um, and since he sees that uh, Jacek's been going for that, he's just going to level up his base further up north, get a giant up there just so that he can kind of make himself a bit safer. Um, he's not really under that much threat over there, but that is creating a nice juicy target for one of these cloaks. Absolutely. I don't know, the economic advantage is swinging towards Arthur, though. He's up to 28 stars per turn, whereas Jacek's only got 22. Um, they're trading a lot of units here in the center, but no one's really making too much directional progress, although Arthur is starting to push back. Of course, now Arthur is going to have to contend with this same choke that's only two tiles wide for both of these spaces. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard for Arthur. Absolutely either huge to here is that he's taking advantage. Oh, yeah, no, go ahead. He's taking advantage of those roads he bought earlier to buy markets. Further cementing his economic lead. Jacek has always been wanting to attack, but now if he doesn't attack, Arthur's just going to keep getting more and more and more stars until he wins. This is an interesting defense that we're making up in the north. So based on the icons that we see on these two units, uh, Arthur knows that the cloak is here, but there's nothing he can do to find it because he hasn't been in the water. He doesn't have any units in range that can reach that. And since he didn't border growth the city, he can't even like drop a port to walk in. So what he's trying to do is just seal off the like a wall here so that the cloak won't be able to reach because the cloak would have to hit this base from the water. It would have to reach back here. Otherwise, it would have to land and then infiltrate on a second turn. So he's just trying to block everything so that the cloak won't be able to get to this one tile that it would need to be able to reach to hit. So it's a pretty good defense. Meanwhile, just macroing up further, getting these markets. He's got nearly double J6 economy now. J6 response requires some precision, but with the bomber, scout, and juggernaut, he can clear it just like this. This was a great attack by Jason. Even by the, the infiltration way. goes through. Like, I thought that he was going to use this bomber to help clear, but he instead used all of his other units so that he could keep his bomber freed up. Splash, and then the juggernaut splash so that he was able to infiltrate. That was a really, really clean uh, attack up north. And uh, Arthur's definitely in a little bit of trouble up there. Although, a little bit of trouble down here for Jacek because we've got. He's out of giants on the ground. And uh, Arthur's closing in on this base in the center of the map. Meanwhile, just another upgrade and another small market coming down for Arthur. He's way ahead economically. He went from struggling, uh, trying to f fighting for surviving, to almost thriving here on the land. Yeah, I'm definitely starting to like Arthur's position. Um, Problem, just it's now a battle so of land versus economy. sea. Yeah, yeah. Arthur really needs to get out onto the water, but instead <laughs> he decides to go for free spirit and chivalry. Burn this base to the ground. Um... <clears throat> and start making knights. I actually want to like just pause really quick and, and take a look. What do you think, you know, about this decision uh, to burn this base down? Because actually just this turn, Arthur got the rest of his road connections and he connected all five bases to his capital. So he actually has a monument available. He could unseize this base by popping a giant with just taking two fish and dropping the monument in that empty space. Um, what do you think about his choice to instead burn the city down? Well, it definitely seems like he's going all in on knights. He sees that he's weak on the water, but he recognizes his opponent has a weakness on the land. Look at all of those archers. A single knight that he can push through there means that that center city is going to be lost and he can push all the way to his capital even. I don't think Arthur has a lot of faith in his ability to push on the water here. Although maybe it would have been a little bit better. He would have lost a monument, but giant push on that city and delay his uh, sabotage attempt up there by just one turn. Yeah, I think he might have been able to delay for up to two. Uh, I think Jacek has a uh, another bomber in the fog, maybe. 
So maybe that's why he decides to just burn the city to the ground. But if he had thrown down the monument and then later burned down the monument, he would have put that city so deep into the red, uh, Jacek wouldn't be able to pull a profit on that city. Oh no, yeah, there wasn't even another bomber in there. So he could have, he uh, popping a giant up there definitely would have held for two extra turns. But maybe, maybe Arthur just thought that it wasn't worth it. Like he didn't see this base as defensible. Uh, just because of the control that Jacek has over the water. Arthur's rear archers are doing a nice job clearing out daggers that hit on this base. The economy, like on paper, is strongly in favor of Arthur, but J6 cloaks are landing often enough that every time, it, if you know, if it pulls six stars from one base and drops it off on the other, it, it's actually his cloaks are kind of evening up the economic disparity here, even though he doesn't have nearly as much SPT on paper. Another cloak entering the water. Absolutely. Jacek has to be a little scared about these, uh, not this one night, but he's splitting up all of his Here archers. We go. <laughs> not splitting them up well enough. Five kills from one night coming through. It clears out all of these units around the front. And five units is actually, that's as many units as Jacek can make in a turn. So, um,. He loses anything else this turn, then his army just got a little bit smaller. His ability to defend producing. on the land, much worse. Yeah, and there's not enough of these cloaks getting the defense bonus. He's got three bombers uh, in the water, though. Uh, if he starts creeping those bombers forward and Arthur isn't, and he's able to deny Arthur the ability to get a foothold in the water, it might be very, very difficult for Arthur. Like, these knights are doing amazing work at clearing out these cloaks, but unless he's able to find some way of pushing forward, either by sea or land, um, Jacek is just going to be able to build up a stronger navy and eventually take over. Interestingly, though, Arthur's taking control of this small lake in the south, um, Jacek doesn't have any way of getting into the water here. He can't border growth his, his remaining cities, um, and the one water tile he has access to isn't actually safe. So even though Jacek has had water control for the entire game, he doesn't have a way of getting it in this south lake. Arthur really pushing forward a lot here. <clears throat> Bomber's doing tons of splash damage. He's able to teach this. But there's still a 36 Juggernaut um, right next to that base waiting. <clears throat> and Jacek doesn't have quite enough units. He might have just enough units to unsiege between the Bombers and the Archers, but his Archers get taken out by a Knight. The Giant sieges, and Jacek resigns the game. Arthur's gamble pushing on land over the sea ended up working, winning him the game. Or maybe it was because of his attack from the second lake. I guess they don't call it lakes for no reason. Either way, congratulations on a well-earned victory. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join our Discord and the next Polyseum. Links for all that are in the description down below. And if you'd like to see more Polyseum content, click the Umaji video on the screen.